With this video clip, we're going to do a cylinder leak down test on this Troy built rototiller. This particular tiller has a Briggs and Stratton flathead engine on it. And I was going to do a full diagnosis on it, but in order to do that, I need to pull over the motor and the pull starter mechanisms broke. So we'll do that, both the diagnosis and the fix of the pull start assembly in a different video. With that being said, we can still do a cylinder leak down test on this um, engine. And that's a really important test to do because I don't want to spend a bunch of time working on this engine if it has a hole in the piston or burn valves or any major engine compression problem. To use one of these cylinder leak down testers though, we do need to have compressed air. So I'm in the shop here. I got my air compressor fired up, ready to go. And we're gonna start with this leak down test. So to do a cylinder leak down test, we have to get the engine at top dead center on its compression stroke. We're going to do that by putting a half inch drive socket on the crankshaft and manually turning the engine to the appropriate position. But in order to get to that flywheel bolt, we're gonna to have to remove the pull start assembly. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Now, the fasteners on one of these older Briggs & Stratton engines, those fasteners are all going to be SAE standard size. They're not going to be metric nuts and bolts on a Briggs & Stratton engine. Remember, it's an American engine. The older ones are going to use standard. So that's half inch, 3 8 7 16 those type size fasteners. We've taken off the pull starter assembly and finger guard and lo and behold, this particular unit does not have a nut on the end of the flywheel. Let's pan down and take a look. There's a one-way roller clutch here for the pull starter assembly. That unit just slides off. You can see the finger guard is broken, so we'll want to replace that. Here's the cast iron flywheel with the magnet assembly over here. But there's no nut here for me to put my ratchet on. So what we're going to have to do is work on the other end of the crankshaft called the PTO or power takeoff. We can manually turn the engine with the fins, but to hold it into the position that we want, which would be top dead center compression, we'll have to hold it on the other end. Next thing we need to do is to take out the spark plug. With the spark plug removed, now we need to feel the, the top of the piston to figure out when we're in top dead center. Remember that the engine goes through top dead center twice in a four stroke cycle. Once at top dead center of the compression stroke, which is what we're after here, and again with top dead center exhaust stroke. The easiest thing to do is just to put it at top dead center and you can feel if you're building compression or you could do the cylinder leak down test if you have 100% leakage past the exhaust valve, well, that's going to tell you that you're on the exhaust stroke and one more revolution will get you to top dead center of the intake stroke. So let's get ourselves positioned to top dead center. So to feel the top of the piston, I have a small wood dowel here, so I won't score up the piston top or the cylinder. Unfortunately, because this is a flathead engine, the piston or spark plug hole, I should say, is really offset from the piston a little bit, but it doesn't allow me a straight shot up and down. So I have to be at a little bit of an angle. I've got myself close to top dead center, and you'll see when I roll over. So if I rotate the engine by hand, you can see it's continuing to go up. And now it's started to go back down. So that was my top dead center point. I'm going to go ahead and back this up just a little bit to right where I'm at top dead center. Now, like I said previously, I'm either at top dead center on the compression stroke, which is what I want, or I'm at top dead center of the exhaust stroke. I'll know that very quickly once I put the leak down tester on. Okay, because we have no flywheel nut to get to, we're grabbing this nut on the back of the PTO shaft, power takeoff shaft. We're going to be able to hold on to this 
combination wrench right here to keep the engine held perfectly at top dead center. Because small engines are free spinning enough as they only have one or maybe two cylinders, when we do a leak down test, it's very likely that the piston's going to want to push down and spin the engine. Because of that, it is important to have a good firm hold on this wrench to keep the engine from rotating. Okay, we have our cylinder leak down tester here. I want to go through the, the setup and calibration before we begin. I have my compressed air. I'm going to go ahead and hook this compressed air up. And I should adjust this so it has 0% leakage. So right now it's showing 10%. That would make me think that my engine already had 10% leakage, which is not what I want. This is a little air regulator. I'm going to unclip that out. And then you can see I can adjust this to different levels. I'm going to adjust it to right where it says zero. At that point, I could thread my adapter hose. Remember, this is very similar to a compression adapter hose, but there's no Schrader valve in it. I would thread this hose into the engine through the spark plug hole and then hook it up. To my leak down tester. As you can see, it's showing 100% leakage because this is just pushing air out into the atmosphere. Notice that I've disconnected it and it didn't go exactly back to zero. It is often that you have to readjust or recalibrate, if you will, in between tests. Now let's go test the engine. Lightly seated. This hose does not need to be super tight. I've calibrated my gauge and I'm ready to see what my leakage will be. Watch the flywheel of the engine to see if the engine rotates. The engine did rotate a little bit. However, it shows that it's at 40% leakage. So it's not 100. Let's listen to where the air is coming from. If it was an intake valve that was leaking past, I would hear it coming past the air filter. If it was an exhaust valve that was leaking, I would hear it going past the muffler, coming out of the muffler. If it was going past the piston rings, well, that I would hear past the crankcase. So let's bring the camera in and we'll see if we can hear where the air is coming from. Okay, we're gonna take off one of the oil fill caps. Now, I know it's hard to see in here, but if the oil level were full, it would be right at the base of the threads and that this neck is threaded down to the bottom, right at the bottom, right where the tip of my wood pointer is, would be where we would want the oil level to. It's hard to see, I'm going to use my wood dowel here as a dipstick and see if I have oil on the tip of this. I do, so it's a little bit low on oil, but not drastically low. This is open, so now when I do the leak down test, if I have oil, now when I do the leak down test, if I have air escaping from here, I know that the air is going past the piston rings, getting into the crankcase. probably hear it and I can definitely feel the air escaping. So now that I've rotated the engine a little bit, I'm down to around 30 to 35 percent leakage. Feels like most of that's coming past the piston rings. What we're going to do next is take off the air cleaner assembly so we can really listen to the intake and also the exhaust. Okay, so I'm taking off the air filter, and there's a couple notes I want to give you on the air filter. If I pull this out, this is a pleated paper filter element, so this is not washable, right? If it's really dirty, you replace it. 
It does also have a pre-filter on this engine. And this pre-filter is foam, so this foam element is washable. And you can see that this one had a fair amount of dirt on it. So this, this pre-filter could be taken out, washed, allowed to dry in the, in the fresh air, in the sunshine, until it was completely dry, put back in with a new paper element, and you'd be good to go. This is not the type of foam filter that you would oil because it's backing up against the paper element. Now that we have this off of there though, let's take a closer look at the air intake and the exhaust. Bonus tech tip here. Once you take off the air filter element, take a white piece of paper, wipe around on the underside of where the air filter was. This surface should be clean. If it's not, it's a sign that dirt was getting in your engine. We do see that we did have some dirt contamination on this engine. Obviously, the more dirt an engine sucks in, the more wear and tear that's going to put on the motor. So we didn't have perfect air filtration going on, unfortunately, on this engine. Next, I'm going to hook up the leak down tester again, and we'll see how much air we hear escaping from either the intake or the exhaust. Hooking up the leak down tester now. Okay, let's listen to the exhaust. Do we hear any air or feel any air coming from that? Now let's go to the intake. Do we hear or feel any air leaving the intake? Let's say it's just too loud in the shop and you can't hear it. A mechanic stethoscope works really well. Taking a piece of fuel hose or heater hose and putting that to your ear and then putting it to the intake and the exhaust helps. But also the paper trick helps as well. So if I have air escaping the exhaust valve, if I put this over the muffler, it would blow that off. And I might have a little bit of air escaping, but not very much. Again, the intake, not very much. Let's do this one last time on the crankcase again. So you can definitely see the paper moving and not wanting to stay on the crankcase. So I would say we do not have a burned intake valve or a burned exhaust valve. We have air going past the piston rings, which is pretty common. I don't like how much leakage we have at 35%. However, as I've moved the engine and kind of freed up the rings, if you pan up, I am in the green zone and it's very likely that once I got the engine running and it was warmed up and the rings had loosened up, that that cylinder leakage would go lower. So at this point, I feel confident that there's enough mechanical integrity in this motor, the valves, the pistons, everything's good enough for me to spend a little bit more time on actually putting this thing together and getting it running. It's, it's worth the investment. Okay, that wraps up the cylinder leak down test for this uh, Briggs & Stratton flathead engine. Remember that a leak down tester gives you more information, right? Because it can tell you whether or not you have leakage past an intake valve or an exhaust valve, and it gives you a percentage point. It tells you, hey, you're zero to 10% leakage, you're perfect, or you're 20% leakage, you're okay. 30 or 40 is in the poor category. It gives you a nice percentage scale and lets you know exactly where you're losing that cylinder leakage and that's why it's the factory recommended procedure to diagnose compression problems but it does require that you have an air compressor in order to do this test i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have access to an air compressor a leak down test is certainly a good diagnostic test to do whether it be your small engine or even your race car bye for now